everyone! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Kayun or Paolo Borba or also known as Barbs from University of Mindanao, Davao City. For this vlog, I am so happy and excited to do this video because we are already in our fourth season for this physical educational series. Yes, you heard it right. We are already in Chief PE4 class in the code 7100, 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 in the evening. Anyways, for this video, I'm so happy because first time I'm going to do a board games. I've never done this before. I'm so happy and excited to what is going to happen later on as we've played this specific game that I chose. But before we proceed to that part, we're going to discuss first its principles and I'm going to explain why do I choose this kind of game as well as to know its rules and procedures and go through to its materials and equipments needed. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So what is Snake and Ladder? Snakes and Ladder is an ancient Indian board game that's recorded today as a worldwide classic game. It requires two or more players and takes place on a board with numbered gridded squares. Throughout the board game, there are snakes and ladders which connect different squares. Players roll a dice and navigate the board. Landing on a ladder advances the player to a square further up the board. While landing on a snake means they have to go back to a previous square. The aim of the game is to reach the final square. The game is a race that's based on the cheer lock and is popular with children. The historic version had its roots in morality lessons in which a player progression of the board represented a life journey complicated by virtues which is represented by a ladder and vices which represented snakes. The game is also sold under other names such as chutes or chots and ladders, bible ups and downs and more. The face back to square one originates from snake and ladder. The American version of Chats and Lodders features a playground team. In ancient India, the game taught the Hindu belief of karma. Now, there are five rules or procedures that should take into account in playing snakes and ladders. First, each player begins with a token or figure on the first square in the bottom left-hand corner of the board. Second, Players take turns rolling a tie and moving their token in accordance with the number they roll. If they roll a 1, then they move one square. If they roll a 2, then they move two squares and so on. Third, if a player lands on the lower end of a ladder, they climb the ladder to the square that features its top end. Fourth, conversely, if a player lands on the higher number square of a snake, then they fall down to its lowest number square. If a player rolls a 6, they get another roll after they move their token. To speed up the game, players can use two dice. And lastly, for our fifth and final step, whoever reaches the last square first must say the word home or base. Then, he or she will be declared as the winner. There are three basic materials and equipment used in playing this game the board, the game piece or token, as well as the ties or die. First is the board. The size of the grid varies but is most commonly 8x8, 10x10, or 12x12 squares. Boards have snakes and ladders starting and ending on different squares. Thus, both factors affect the duration of each game. Next, game piece or token. This is important because this is represented by a distinct player for each game. Lastly, die. A single die is rolled to determine random movement of a player's token in a traditional form of play. However, you can also use two dice for a shorter game. Now, we're already understood and discussed the fundamental principles of snakes and ladders. This time around, let's proceed in playing Snake and Leather in an actual game.
learn and values in this game. First, Virtues and Vices. The game has been interpreted and used as a tool for teaching the effects of good deeds versus bad. The ladders represent virtues such as generosity, faith, and humility, while the snakes represented vices such as lust, anger, murder, and thief. As in life, the game shows that the number of ladders will always be less than the number of snakes as a reminder that a path of good is much more difficult to tread than the path of sins. The game taught an important lesson. Good deeds take you up. Bad deeds take you down. It is also important to identify your goal. In this game, the goal is pre-identified for you. It is very clear that to win, you need to reach 100. Those who have played the game might have realized how focused we stay in the game to reach 100 in spite of getting any ladder or getting stung by any snake. Irrespective of what is happening to our competitor in the game, we continue to stay extremely focused to reach 100, defying all odds and not getting down by any snake bites. Another thing that we should remember is patience. Patience is another virtue we can learn from this game. You may be down and out. You may be the last in the lot, but if you keep patience and continue to do what is the right thing to do, you might soon be surprised at how quickly life can give back to you, exactly the way how it happens in this game. At the end of the day, it is not the number of ladders or snakes that you face in your life that will determine your fate. Has anyone won this game just because he or she got more ladders? Definitely no. Your future in the game of life is determined by one thing, and one thing only. Movement. This is the biggest lesson of them all, according to me, and based on my experience upon playing the game. Never be in too much of a hurry to reach the end of the game. Enjoy the lucky breaks, but realize that the steady potches and the snake prevents us from getting to the end too quickly and adds spice to our game. Enjoy your journey of this game, the twist, turns, and the snake and ladders equally. In the end, everyone will reach the end goal, sooner or later. Thank you.